listen to me. It's hot out. I'm tired of it being hot out. 85, 90, 95 degrees. And some of these people love the summer and they can't get enough of it. I've had enough of it. I'm ready for the winter, for the cold, the snow. I mean, you'll be walking around and it's so humid and the air's so thick and you'll be melting and sweating. You know, my face was so hot that, that my glasses were, were fogging up from the temperature of my eyeballs. Steve Wonder here from GetRubix.com. And finally, because everyone requested it, we're going to take a look at Autopilot pre-provisioning, formerly known as White Glove. I'm going to take you through the process, how to make sure it's set up correctly, and then we're even going to run a machine through it. And it can't do virtual, so I set up a physical machine just for you. I mean, you get to the point where if it's so hot and so humid, it just sucks the the energy out of you, and, and you can't even do anything. You're just going to slump back and, like, melt. Get Rubik's. Solving for the modern workplace. Okay, so before actually diving into our setup and our demo, uh, I want to go over a few things here. So this is an image I put, and these are Windows 10 screenshots. I'm going to show you the demo in Windows 11. Honestly, it's the same thing. doesn't matter. But I really like this diagram because it kind of explains the autopilot process at the device and the user level. So if you were to look at this in two phases, device level has phases A and B. And A is the sign in, realm discovery, making sure the enrollment permissions are there and kind of connecting you to the tenant. And step B is everything that is assigned to your dynamic group based on the autopilot group tag, pushing from Intune, gets pushed at that point. And finally, in the end, when the user signs in and they're at their desktop, both user level things come down and anything that was left over that didn't come down during step B. Um, and of course, this makes uh, this is, you know, the autopilot flow. And this essentially makes for depending on what's here in step B, this is where a lot of organizations can see really long provisioning times. If someone says, well, hey, you know, I'm waiting 60 minutes for all my apps to come down. Well, how many apps are you pushing here and do you need them all? We did the video last week on how to speed up autopilot deployment, but I think ultimately if you can't speed it up enough, you have to look at this question and say, how, how many of these applications need to be there before my user signs in, right? If you can get that number low enough to where a user is only waiting 20, 30 minutes for provisioning, I think that's acceptable, right? Turn on the PC, wait a half hour, you're good to go. Some organizations have told me they don't care if it takes an hour. They just let the user know and they boot it up. But for those of you who haven't moved to autopilot or are hesitant to move to autopilot because you don't want to leave your user with this crazy long provisioning time, there's an answer for that. And that's what pre-provisioning is. So let's look at our device for a second. This is a Windows Surface Laptop Studio. And let's see, yep, you can see the screen. I have a capture card left over from my Twitch streaming days. If you're not familiar with what pre-provisioning is, so in a typical autopilot scenario, I would go through and click, you know, yes, and continue to set up the device. In this case, I'm gonna click the Windows key five times. One, two, three, four, five. And notice I am prompted to do a few things. I can install a provisioning package, okay? I can pre-provision with Windows Autopilot or I can reset the device. When I click pre-provision and hit next, the device is actually going to do a few things here. It's going to call out to see if it does belong anywhere from an autopilot perspective, right? And then it's going to see if pre-provisioning is allowed because you have to allow pre-provisioning. And then it's going to just make sure it has the right autopilot profile, right? Belongs to the right organization. And we're going to be presented with the option to actually run it through. Okay, so you can see that it is all set to pre-provision with autopilot. We have an organization. That's rubixdev.com. You can see we have a default autopilot profile sign. Uh, the companion app and QR code we're gonna talk about another time. These aren't critical to the process, um, but there is uh, some additional functionality that you gain with this. And I don't have a user assigned. So before we click next and go through this, let's explain what actually happens with pre-provisioning. All right, so if you take a look at what we've done here, we were able to split these into two flows. So in the pre-provisioning lane, uh, the device is gonna automatically go get everything that it has entitled to it from into. After that, the device actually does what's called like a reseal. Think of it as a sysprep. 
And once that device is shipped to the end user, they basically have to do steps A and C if we're doing everything else correctly. So the user signs in, the apps are there from step B, which occurred in pre-provisioning, and they are brought to sign in and, you know, start using the desktop. So what do we have to do to make sure everything in Intune is set up for this? So obviously the first thing is going to be to make sure everything is assigned to the right device group. Um, that, that same device group has to have our autopilot profile assigned to it. Uh, I'm going to go to devices, enrollment, and I'm going to go to uh, deployment profiles. So that's my default profile. The very first thing you have to do is you have to make sure your allow pre-provision deployment is set to yes. So this doesn't have to be pre-provision. If I were to just click next and set this up as a user, it would work. But having this on allows uh, after you click the Windows key five times for the device to find the autopilot profile and for you to proceed with this pre-provision method. So that's the first thing that has to be done. That has to be set to yes. Pre-provisioning also requires the device enrollment status page. The enrollment status page, as we've talked about many times, basically determines how long we're going to sit there and wait. However, with pre-provisioning, things are a little different. So if we go to settings and we scroll down, I'm waiting for autopilot branding. Um, I think I'm also gonna wait for, let's do Chrome. I've shifted this around a few times. Uh, we'll do that one, select. And uh, I think we could do remote desktop just as a nice, nice one. Okay. So you have to make sure this is set to lock only what you want it to lock, but you will notice this button down here only fail selected blocking apps in technician phase. Okay. So what this means here only fail selected blocking apps in technicians phase, you would set that to no, and essentially autopilot behaves as it normally would. Um, it's going to install the three listed here. If it fails, the whole thing fails. Um, if you turn on only fail selected blocking apps, to, if you turn this on to yes, any app that's required to that device is going to attempt to be installed, but only one of the three selected apps can crash the ESP essentially. So this is a way, I suppose, if you're outsourcing this and you want to attempt to have as many apps as possible come down, you could do that. We're not going to do that because I only wanted to install this three to show you the process, but it is something to think about. As far as device configuration settings go in Windows, we're going to go to configuration and we're going to want to have uh, our make sure we're skipping our user account portion of the ESP. And we should have that here under autopilot enrollment settings. Um, and we've covered this in a video, disable user ESP. There's an OMA URI for that. That's right there. We did this in our how to speed up autopilot video, so you can just get the command from there, but you're definitely going to want this to be on to keep things streamlined. The last thing is you got to understand when you are enrolling with pre-provisioning, there is no sense of the user yet. So you, besides the many other reasons, you're going to want to make sure your automatic enrollment, okay, is set to all so that nothing gets caught up in trying to fit into a user group because there are no user groups here. It's pre-user. So that should be on all to have the best experience. All right, so now that we talked about setting it up, we're actually going to run through a device and just see what happens when we go to autopilot. Okay, so I'm here on the device. I can see my organization is correct. My deployment profile is correct. I'm going to hit next. And the first thing you're going to notice is a very, very familiar enrollment status page. And everything here should be uh, pretty standard. All right, so we're going to wait for this to go through device setup. Now, I know what you're thinking. Steve, where did you get your glasses? I'm joking. You're thinking, why can't I test this on virtual machines? And to be honest with you, this is something that has been kind of frustrating since the introduction of autopilot white glove, which is what they used to call pre-provisioning back in 2018, 2019, some time frame. Um, really, the way it works is because there's no user to get some kind of an access token in this whole procedure, pre-provisioning relies on uh, TPM attestation. And because you can't really correctly get that attestation from a virtual TPM, it's just, it's, it's, it's not allowed. All right, so as you can see, we've completed the first part. 
And if we look at the device setup, uh, we're generally going to see the same thing, right? It's going to count the number of apps installed. And that's kind of the benefit is we really don't need to, you know, kind of hold back on how many apps we want to push here if we're going to do it this way, because the assumption is someone else is doing this for you. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, why am I using autopilot for this? I'm just going to image the device if I have to set it up first and wait for it. And I'll be honest with you, when autopilot white glove was first introduced, uh, I thought the same exact thing. And what became very apparent was you're not drop shipping the device or doing any kind of direct to end user deployment this way because there's this touch point in the middle, but you're also not in the imaging business anymore either. I'm still dynamically provisioning the device based on how it's set up in Intune without worrying about wiping it, laying down a golden image. And it's gonna be the same thing as if I deployed it to the end user. So, you know, they don't lock you into this. You don't have to decide, do I wanna do it this way? Do I not wanna do it this way? You know, uh, do I want to be user driven and have two different profiles? If you decide you want to ship this to an end user or if you're in a particular bind and you have to get hardware out faster, sure, have something drop shipped and they can log in with the user flow and you know everything's fine. But if you want to do this in bulk, so devices are ready, you know, hopefully no more than two or three weeks ahead of time because of Windows updates. Um, it's just a great option to have without sacrificing any user experience or expectations uh, that folks might have when they're getting devices. Okay, so it looks like the provisioning completed and it's rebooting. Okay, and that's the final uh, page here. So you see it's telling us that it took 11 minutes to complete. I, I spared you some of that, of course. Um, and the only option here is to hit reseal. And what reseal is gonna do is it's gonna put the device back in a state that is just like the out-of-box experience. So we've completed that part and the user, they're gonna experience the sign-in, skip the device app provisioning through ESP and go right through to getting their user profile and being on the desktop. I've said it before and I will continue to say it, options. It's good to have options. User-driven provisioning may work very well for some folks, and in my experience, it does work a lot of the time, but when you have uh, an incredibly large amount of apps that need to be on the device before an end user can use it, maybe you have certain use cases like C-levels where you really don't want them doing anything uh, first and you just want them to have a fully provisioned machine, it's nice to have the versatility in autopilot to decide on the fly, are you gonna pre-provision this, have that part skipped, or just have the end user sign in. So, and that's all there is with pre-provisioning. Like I said, I get the question a lot, but as long as your autopilot user-driven flow works really well, a few things to look out for, and and you know you can start testing uh, pre-provisioning pre yourself. Just hit that Windows key five times. We'll be seeing you.